Greetings everybody, welcome to a Golang tidbit thing. Today I want to look at the awesome that is GoBind data, which is a mechanism for including non-Go text files or other binary data in your app ready to use quickly. Since we are talking server stuff, this is probably going to be JavaScript or other files like that, that you just want to be quick to access. I was actually quite wary to use GoBind data for a while, as it's not part of the official suite, and uh, I didn't want to have to install too many other things, and it, I couldn't quite get my head around how it was going to work in a in a clean way. So I was pleasantly surprised when I tried it. Today I'll show you how easy it is to use, I guess. So let's get to it. Um, so we type um, go get dash u, which seems to be a flag for install. And then it's github.com forward slash J-T-E-E-U-W-E-N, which is just the name of the um, the guy who started it, I guess. This is the, it's his repository. Um, and then go bin data. Now, I had in my head that it was bind data. But I think it's binary data. So... Um, and I think that should get everything. I'm going to hit double. Um, dot, dot, dots on to make sure everything comes and gets installed. Um, and we just wait a second. Oh, that's done. So now, um, with that done, I'm just going to make a really quick project shouldn't take too long so um, make directory um, bin test one CD bin test one all right yeah, have code convoy bin test one okay so we're in here and we're going to vim up ourselves a file a go file vim main dot go Obviously, you know how to write a quick go file, so just throw it together quickly. Let's fast forward this. So, fairly classical go style function. In here, I want to respond with some HTML. But I don't want to write HTML in Go, so I'm going to create a template. So, tab edit. Oh, I need to make a directory. Um, files. Okay, um, and tab edit file stroke um, temp one dot HTML. So here we go, we've got a template. Again, you know what HTML looks like. Okay, fairly basic, but I'm writing it as a HTML file so we can see it the lazy way around. Um, we'll write that. And now we get to use our Go bind data. It's already here, we're in the right place. So I've already installed it through the mechanism you saw. Go dash bin data. And then I just typed files, which is the name of the folder, and dot 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 to say recursively do everything inside that run the program and now ls i have a file called bindata.go and that's fantastic it's just a go file let's uh let's open it up in vim here tab edit so just like this we have a golang file just it looks like go code it's easy enough to read the Go code, we've got a function called bind data. Okay, it's lowercase, so we won't be able to access that. Let's try and find the functions that are uppercase at their beginning, because they are our API, aren't they? Um, no, 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 no. Asset, here's our big function. Take a name, the name of our asset, um, and it returns a byte array, a slice, a byte. <laughs> Take the function name, returns a byte slice. Perfect. Um, what more could you ask for? Uh, you can even do it without an error so it panics. Okay, that's very kind of them. Um, you've got 
asset info so you can get all the file info that was about that file that's been stored as well inside this system we can get a byte array of the asset name so a list of all of the assets basically yeah, it just ranges through the array that it's got stored um, and apart from that the only other thing you need to know is it just puts it in the file there there underscore files temp html is the bytes that simple i i almost began to cry when i saw how simple this was to use um just call it so i'm going to just use it now i'm just pull it together um in our handle function we should probably do it in a check shouldn't we so a comma error colon equals asset and what did we call it it was file stroke temp one dot html right so that's our file and then w dot write a we should respond to an error too so if error does not equal nil fumpt.println could not load asset colon send an error as well there we go and here my baby's come home and here we just return right okay now this should work yeah, return. So now we come over here and we go go build. Oh, we got some problems. Uh, script seven undefined HTTP and HTTP response writer. Oh, well, that's an obvious problem. That'll probably explain a few of our problems. Uh, bin test. So dot dash bin test one. And it's running. So if we go over here, alt local host, come on, 8080. Hello world, that's. Hello world. Good, so that works. Um, but here's the fun part of it the thing that makes this really cool is that bin test is not dependent on the files being in the right place anymore. If we move, uh, um, let's copy it bin test and I'm just going to put it in my my home directory just for a second wiggle oh. so now if I go cd so it's in here dot dash bin test and it has no idea where the files are but if I run it oh um, I should probably yeah bin test one now it's running again. Oh, tell you what, let's control C it and hit refresh. So there's nothing there. And now if I run it out here, and now I hit refresh. Oh, retry the URL. It's back. So I think that's pretty cool. Well worth trying to use bin test if you want to be able to include stuff in your files because that means you can send them, stick it on the server, and all you need is one file moved to the server and everything works. So consider that as an option, a tool in your kit, if you like. And thank you to the guys who made GoBinData. Brilliant job.